Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh and this is your stimulus check update for the next stimulus package for Sunday, February 7th. I hope everyone is off to a good and safe start to their Sunday so far. In this video, I'll be discussing updates in regards to the current relief package and the third stimulus check. I'll also be discussing the $1,400 direct payments, the latest on how they may target these payments, and then I'll be wrapping up this video by answering some of the comments and questions that I received in my previous video. But first, if you wouldn't remember quickly, like in this video, give me a big thumbs up. It really just helps with the YouTube algorithm in terms of pushing this video out to other viewers like you and hopefully helping other people like you as well. Also, being that it's Super Bowl Sunday, let me know in the comment section below who you got today. Is it going to be the Buccaneers or is it going to be the Chiefs? Okay, so with there being strong speculation that Democrats will drop the income threshold eligibility for the third round of direct payments, Many progressive Democrats, including AOC, Ron Wyden, and Bernie Sanders are beginning to push back. In a tweet, Bernie Sanders said, Unbelievable. There are some Democrats who want to lower the income eligibility for direct payments from $75,000 to $50,000 for individuals and $150,000 to $100,000 for couples. In other words, working class people who got checks from Trump would not get them from Biden. Brilliant. Minutes later, Sanders made another tweet saying, I strongly oppose lowering income eligibility for direct payments from $75,000 to $50,000 for individuals and $150,000 to $100,000 for couples. In these difficult times, all working class people deserve the full $1,400. Last I heard, someone making $55,000 a year is not rich. The Bittens are off. So with all this opposition from Democrats, there's a chance they could end up changing this reduction. On Friday, there were conversations from within the White House to move the face out rate instead of lowering the income threshold, which could be a real possibility. This means that instead of lowering the income requirements from $75,000 to $50,000 for individuals, they could simply keep the full benefit at $75,000, but make it so it phases out at a quicker rate. So, instead of the checks decreasing by 5% for every $100 you earn over $75,000, they could have it diminish, say, 15%. Either way, it's really difficult to target these checks. For example, $50,000 in Mississippi is obviously going to go much further than it would in Southern California. It's hard to pinpoint an exact number, and all things considered, we shouldn't be leaving Americans out in the cold here. Americans and American families should definitely come first when it comes to this aid. In the current plan, dependents under the age of 17 would also be eligible for $1,400, so a family of four would earn $5,600. Additionally, Democrats are also pushing for a separate child tax benefit, which would give parents an additional $3,600 per year for children under the age of six, and $3,000 per year for children between the ages of six and 17. So, some version of this is also expected to be in the final plan. Also, instead of the benefit being an end-of-the-year tax credit, they hope to send this money out on a monthly basis. Moreover, adult dependents, at least for now, will be eligible for the full benefit of $2,000 since they missed out on the last round of $600 checks. Okay, so, starting tomorrow, on Monday, they'll begin working towards getting the reconciliation bill passed. Last week, we saw them pass the budget resolution, which simply allows for them to pass the bill in the Senate with just a simple majority, rather than needing the usual 60 votes. And now, they need to actually draft up and pass a reconciliation bill. In a statement, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said, On Monday, we will begin working on the specifics of the bill. Hopefully in a two-week period of time, we'll send something over to the Senate, and this will be done long before the due date. So, it is Nancy Pelosi's hope that within two weeks, which would be around the 22nd of February, they'll have the bill passed in the House and sent over to the Senate. It is expected that most members of the House will be leaving D.C. for two weeks, while Democratic chairs create the reconciliation package. At the moment, according to Pelosi at least, she hopes to have the bill finished up and ready to be voted on by the week of February 22nd. At the moment, they'll need to figure out which provisions can legally be in the bill and which ones can't be. For example, provisions such as the one that would increase the federal minimum wage up to $15 per hour may not be able to make it in because of the Senate budget rules. Most Democrats at this point expect that provision to be left out, even the president. Instead, they hope to pass their other bill, which was recently reintroduced, 
which would increase the federal minimum wage up to $15 per hour by the year 2025. They'll also have to figure out exactly how they're going to target the next round of direct payments or if they'll end up targeting them at all. Over the next week or so, we should learn a whole lot more about that aspect. At this point, we are still seeing Senator Joe Manchin, who is expected to be the key 50th vote in the Senate, push for some type of bipartisanship. Because of this, it is possible that the Biden administration may need to lower some of their overall numbers, such as the $350 billion expected to go towards state and local governments. Let's wait and see. So, right now, it looks like lawmakers are on pace to pass this relief package by the deadline of March 7th, which would allow them to extend the federal unemployment benefits before they expire on the 14th. Once President Biden signs this package into law, it is expected that people should begin receiving the third round of direct payments within just a few days, just like the last round. The majority of people should receive their payments within the first few weeks, with, of course, the only possible hiccup being the fact that the IRS will also be dealing with taxes at that point as well. With that said, this next round of relief is more or less guaranteed. At this point, it's just a matter of when rather than a matter of if. In the meantime, all we can continue to do is hang in there, stay strong, and hope for the best. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm gonna move right along to answering some of the comments and questions that I received in my previous video. And if you do have any other comments or questions for me, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I do try to answer as many of the comments and questions as I possibly can, but for those comments and questions I'm not able to respond to, I do try to pick some of the more popular ones to answer in the next video in video form. Okay, so without further ado, let me go ahead and jump into the first comment of this video, which is from Tracy. Tracy says, are the eligibility requirements for the next stimulus check $50,000 for single individuals and $100,000 for married couples? Okay, thank you so much for your question, Tracy. And yes, more than likely, it looks like they are going to be changing the income eligibility to those income levels. Even though early on, it appeared like they would be using the same income levels as the first two rounds at $75,000 for single individuals and $150,000 for couples, it's now a pretty bipartisan issue that the next round of direct payments should be targeted. However, nothing is certainly 100% set in stone, so this is all subject to change. Either way, I'll definitely make sure to keep you updated. Okay, moving along to the next comment this video, which is from Scar. Scar says, Hola Josh, do you have any information on the cost of living adjustment raise for people on SSI and SSDI? Okay, thank you so much for your question. And yes, for this year, there is a 1.3% increase for people on Social Security benefits. There's also a possibility of a $200 raise every single month for people on Social Security benefits, such as SSI and SSDI. However, in order for that to happen, it must be passed in a bill. Okay, moving along to the next comp to this video, which is from Gio. Gio says, hey Josh, what would be the easiest way to set up direct deposit for the stimulus check? I want to get ahead of the mill curve. Okay, thank you so much for your question. And unfortunately, at this point in time, it's not possible to set up direct deposit. For the first round of direct payments, you were able to do so through the payment portal. However, since then, the IRS hasn't been allowing anyone to update their information, even if they change banks. Instead, they're either sending the checks to us in the mail or asking for us to claim the money as a credit on our tax returns. For the third round of direct payments, once this next bill passes, hopefully within the next month, it is my hope that the IRS will allow people to once again go in and update all their information. With that said, just like everything else, I'll definitely make sure to keep you updated. Okay, moving along to the next comment to this video, which is from Dead. Dead says, it passed in the House, then in the Senate, and now it's in the House again? What passed yesterday? Okay, thank you so much for your question, and I can definitely understand your confusion. What we saw just recently passed was a budget resolution, which is different from the actual reconciliation bill. What passing the budget resolution did was allow for them to pass the next bill through the Senate with just a simple majority of 51 votes, rather than needing the full 60 votes that they usually need. This is important because Democrats can now pass the reconciliation bill through on a partisan basis with all Democrat votes and zero Republican votes. By doing this, they more or less guarantee that they'll be able to pass the bill and send it to the desk of President Biden. Again, the expected timeline for this is still at some point in early to mid-March. All right, so on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. If you did enjoy the content in this video and you'd like to see more videos like it, 
please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It is completely free to do so, and it's a great support to me. Also, if you'd like to receive four free stocks from Weeble, with two of them valued all the way up to $1,600 each, or one free stock from Robinhood just for signing up and linking your bank account, please feel free to claim those free stocks by clicking the link in the description box below. And finally, if you join Rakuten with my referral link in the description box below and spend at least $20, Rakuten will give you $20 cash back. This means you can buy an item through Rakuten with one of their referral links, such as Nike, for $20, which will be right around $22 after tax, and Rakuten will give you $20 just for making that purchase. This is just an incredible deal that I would love for everyone to take advantage of. Okay, so until next time, I'll see you guys and I hope you have a great day today.